Hello and welcome to another Crack in the Cryptic and today a Sudoku video. What I'm going to look at specifically is a diagonal Sudoku puzzle. This is a reasonably common variant in that you do sometimes see it in newspapers and uh, magazines even other than specialist Sudoku magazines and it's used there quite a lot too. Um, in addition to the normal Sudoku rules where the numbers 1 to 9 have to appear in every row, column, and 3 by 3 box. Here we have two long marked diagonals as well, and each of those has to contain the numbers 1 to 9. Um, and that makes it a quite an interesting puzzle to solve, as always with the variant Sudoku. This one, by the way, comes from a recent Sudoku Grand Prix competition, open to everybody, but um, has to be logged into. They're very interesting puzzles. Um, the, the first thing one has to think about with a variant Sudoku, I think, is how, how much one is going to use the extra constraint supplied. And in this puzzle, um, with, a, with a diagonal, you often have to combine it. It's not one of those where you start with normal Sudoku rules and then eventually apply the extra constraint. And it's not one of those where you start with the, constra the extra constraint and that really narrows things down and then you kind of bring in the, uh, the normal Sudoku rules. They really have to work hand in glove here. So looking at this left-hand middle box to start with. Now in the central column of it, we can see 4128 can't apply. And we've also got 69 in the box. So 3, 5, and 7 all have to be here, which is quite interesting. Um, the middle one specifically has to be 3 or 5. Um, I think I'm going to have to just sh oh, to shrink the um, type size to get 3, 5, 7 in there and there. But that's quite useful. Now, what that means for the other two cells in the same column is that they have to be either six or nine. And I'm going to slightly, this deviates slightly from the um, pencil mark method we've been talking about. So I'm going to have to remember as I go along what I'm doing with these numbers. So here I'm saying for once that this box can be either six or nine, and this box can be either six or nine. They must be one or the other. Um, now in this box, that we're coming back to this center left box, we've got three, five, seven, six, nine set out. One has to either be here or here. And two has to either be here or here or here. Um, so we don't exactly know what they are, but that might prove useful later. Um, now, looking at these threes at the top, we can see that in this top left box, the threes can't be in either of the first two rows. So they must be either here or here. Um, and the nine, no, it could be in the middle. We don't, that's not an elimination we can use. Now, one of the sometimes very useful factors of a diagonal puzzle is that um, a number must appear on the diagonal. So if a diagonal, which obviously runs through three of the three by three boxes, if you can tell that in two of those a number doesn't appear on the diagonal, then it must appear on the diagonal in the third one. And on this diagonal, look at ones. That one is clearly not on the diagonal in the top box. That one is clearly not on the diagonal in that box. So any one on the diagonal must be in this bottom right box. It can't be there because of the one in that row, and it can't be there because of the one in that column. So in fact, this has to be a one. And that's a potentially very useful um, diagnosis. So the one in this box can't be in either that row or that row because of these two ones so it must be either here or here um, the one at the top now this is quite interesting we've got a one in the second column now and a one in the third column so the one in this box 
has to be in this column and it can't be in the bottom row because of that one. So we've got one in one of those two boxes. Um, in fact, it's also true that we've got one in one of those two boxes for the same sort of reason. But in this box up here, which is on the diagonal, that one is not on the diagonal. So there's no one on the diagonal there. Because of this one, there's no one on the diagonal there. So the one in this box must be on the diagonal. So it has to be that one. And that gets rid of that possible one. It fixes the one in the center box there. And I think, oh, we've, apart from those two possibilities, we've got all the ones done in the grid now. Um, so again, we're using some of the possibilities as we go along. Now, similarly, I said, look for those numbers that can't be on a diagonal in two of the boxes. Two isn't on this diagonal in that box, and it's not on that same diagonal in this box. So it must be on that diagonal in this box, but in this case, we don't know which one at all. So we'll just enter the possible twos, and there are three of them up here. Um, now, looking maybe now at, is it worth looking at the center, which is on, now we know that this central cell can't be one, two, or seven. They're all in the same box. It can't be three because that's above it. And interestingly, we know that it can't be six or nine because they are both on diagonals. So it can't be either of them. That doesn't help all that much, actually. It just makes it four, eight, or five at the moment. Um, so we'll look for something else we can conclude. We've got three, five, seven, six, nine, one, two. We know that's four or eight, but we don't know which one. Um, one, seven, four, three. Ah, oh, now this is quite interesting. Ah, yes. Now, um, in this column, the eighth column of the grid, um, we've got nine, one, five, six, and three. They're all fixed. The black numbers are fixed. Four, though, can't be in the middle box because of that four. So it must be in the top box there. And that's narrowed down the twos a bit. But we can also use that four as soon as you get a number from one direction, try it in the other directions. And looking in this central top box, there's a four there, there's a four there. It has to be in the bottom row. The only space left available is there. Now that fixes where four goes in the central box. It can't be there or there, and it can't be there because of that four. So the only place left is there. Um, and now four in this box, we know it can't be here because these three are three, five, and seven. The only place left is there. And we don't know about the two bottom fours. So sim as just as with the ones, um, we've put seven of them in the grid and narrowed the other two down to two possible cells in two boxes. But hopefully some clarity will come on that at some point. Now, up here, we've got, well, I'm looking at twos now. Five, four, nine, three. To fit a two into this box, um, ah, no, sorry, that's not as helpful as I thought. Um, right, we'll look at twos, twos up here instead. We've got a two there in the second column, and we know that the two in the central box here is in the third column. So the two in the left, in the top box, must be in the left-hand column. Um, we don't know which one it is, and I'm going to mark them all as possible, but we do know it's one of them. Um, that one. Now, the way that these pencil marks are working, um, what I'm saying is not that this cell has to be a two or a three, but that of the possible twos, they're there, and the possible threes are there, um, and that's included in those. Now, over here in this column, we've got that four fixed. So we've got three, four, six, five, one, nine. We've got two, eight, seven to fit in the middle box. And we know that this central one has to be the eight because two and seven both appear in the row. So we don't know quite which order they are, but we've got seven, eight, two, one, four fixed there. 
Um, that doesn't necessarily help with anything else. That eight though in uh, sorry, that eight in this box has to be here where we've got eight and two in those cells. Now that eight is fairly helpful as well because we've got an eight now in that column, an eight in this column, the eight up here, like the twos, must be in the first column. Um, oh, this could be two, three, eight as well. I'm going to need to shrink the cell to get all those possibilities in. Sorry about that. But there we go. Two, three, eight. There we are. Um, we so mm, has that helped much? Um, I do get a bit confused sometimes with the pencil marks I'm showing you because they're not quite the same pencil marks I'd make if I was working on paper. Um, five, four, nine, one, six, four, one, two, seven, eight. Right, now we need to come up with something else. Okay, 174, in this box down here, we've got a 174 already. The bottom row can't contain 9 or 8. Um, that limits 9 to these two cells at least. It does also limit 8 to the cells above it, but I don't know exactly which is which. So that's not advancing me very much. Um, we need two, six, four, nine. Not sure. I should probably be doing something else with a diagonal at this point. We might have uncovered something that I've not been able to use yet. Um, nines. Okay, nines in the central. Uh, that's quite interesting. Okay, these two nines that I fixed, we can actually do better than that because in the central box, nines can't be in the bottom row because of that nine or in the right hand side because of that nine. That only leaves these two cells in the central column, and they therefore rule out that one from being a nine. So we've got a nine here, and that fixes a nine here, interestingly, on the diagonal. So that rules out this central cell as being a nine because of the diagonal constraint. And I think now, this 9 is very useful for this cell. Remember, that was either 6 or a 9, so it now has to be the 6. This one similarly has to be the 9. And now we know that 9 is either 9 in this box up here, can't be in the second row because of that 9, or the third row because of that 9, and it can't be on the diagonal because of this 9, so it's here. And that now fixes those ones, which is helpful. It also fixes the last nine in the grid, I think. So we've got all the nines done. And in this box here, we now know one, nine, four, eight, and seven, two in those. So these three are three, five, six. Um, and that's probably going to be worth knowing as we go along. I might not make the mark at the moment. Now, let's have a look at this diagonal again. 1, 6, 9 are already done on this diagonal, and 4. We know a 2 is up here from our earlier deductions, and look, 7 can't be in this box, so it must be up here too. So these two cells are 2 or 7 between them. And these three in the middle are 3, 8, and 5 in some order, and that means the only cell left a six there on that in that box that's fixing a six here um, and now we can complete the central row with five and three and that box up here we've now got everything but eight and five in it and they must go in that order because of the five already in that third row eight six nine four five one we've got three Three two seven to fit. Don't quite know. Down here we've got five eight one nine four six. Can't be 
the bottom cell because of the diagonal and it can't be that cell because of the row so six is there um, three is one of the bottom ones but we don't know one which one so and these two we now know are three and eight in some order okay so we're moving along this cell here is most of the numbers are ruled out in its column and two and six in its row so that has to be an eight um one eight four nine seven so this now has to be three or seven and we know it can't be three because we know that three and five are directly above it somewhere so it has to be seven and that's sorting out that two and seven that we were planning to resolve at some point that fixes that seven um, we know that six can't be in this cell here so the only six in that row possible is there um, two, six, seven, three, five, seven, I'm not sure um, we know that these two have to be two and three although we don't know in which order yet now let's have a look at the leading diagonal again one seven four five six nine all done this has to be a three because of the two and eight in the same row that fixes this one that we were just looking at as a two so we've got eight up here and now we know this is a seven in fact from everything else this must be a we've got two and a five place yes that's a two that's a five and now i think we've actually got enough from all of the deductions we've made to largely finish off which is great and uh, that's one way of getting through a diagonal sudoku this is one of those where I'm really no expert in diagonals, so no doubt somebody like Tom Collier, a friend of this site, would be able to point out several things that I was quite slow on the uptake there with, but uh, nonetheless, we get through it in the end, and um, we've got, we will in a moment have a completed puzzle, which is really all we can ask for at this point. So just a couple more uncertainties to finish off and we're done. So there we go. That's how you do a diagonal Sudoku or this particular one anyway. Um, I hope that was of some help to you and uh, hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye now.